Okay. So let me quickly tell you about the flow of the session. So first of all, you will get to know your mentor. And then you'll see a short PPT wherein you'll get to know your course details. And still, if you have a doubt, you can always ask that by typing in the chat box. We'll be happy to answer. Okay. So this would be the flow. And after all these things, your demo will begin. So I hope the flow is clear to you. Show me a thumbs up if it is. Okay, good. It is clear to Mantram and to Arya. Okay. And to Asha's also. Good. So I've got the quorum and to Arav also. Shravya, it is not clear? Oh, your thumb is tired. Okay. Okay, you got it. Right. So let me tell you that we have with us Aishwarya ma'am. And I'm sure you're going to love her energetic sessions. Okay. And, you know, she has got a passion for teaching. She loves to interact with kids like you. She's got substantial experience and expertise in science. So I'll not speak much. I'll request Aishwarya ma'am to speak to you directly. All over to you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Aishwarya. I hope everybody can hear me. Yes? Yes? No? Don't know? Okay, great. All right. So my name is Aishwarya. I'm from Delhi. And uh, I have an MPhil in botany. I also have a BA degree. I am currently pursuing my PhD in botany only. So I hope all of you don't like biology. All of you said you don't like biology. I hope I change that for you. Right, because my major is in biology only. Other than that, like ma'am said, I like interacting in class. So for the sessions, I would like you to interact with me as much as possible. Right, uh, clear your doubts. Uh, make sure that you ask as many questions as possible, and I hope we can have a good learning experience together. All right, thank you so much. Thank you, ma'am. Now, children, allow me to share my screen. Just a moment, and then we are good to go. So I believe my screen is visible to all. Okay. So a very warm welcome to each one of you to the demo and interaction program for Class 6 Science Olympiad Level 2 course. As you are already aware, Olympiad Success is India's largest online preparation platform for Olympiad exams. Olympiad Success Live is India's first exclusive live classes for Olympiad's preparation and School Plus by Olympiad Success is one of its own kind of annual program that includes eight important courses that really matter at this point of time in your life, which include mathematics, English, science, logical reasoning, communication, both spoken and written, Vedic math and coding. Here you can get online CBSE as well as Olympiad's classes for grades 6 to 10, one-on-one -on -one preparation classes for International Mathematics Olympiads like SASMO, CMO, HKIMO, TIMO, Math Counts, US Common Core Math Competition, Math Kangaroo, and PRMO. So you can meet our international rank holders for the year 2021-22 on the screen. There are so many. So classes are going to be group sessions with batch size of around 20 students delivered through Zoom by seasoned tutors. You've already met your mentor, Eshwarya ma'am. So you get two sessions per week, Tuesdays and Saturdays. Note down the timings, 8 p.m. to 9.15 p.m. with five minutes of break in between. So the sessions will include topic-wise quick revision of chapters and discussion on previous year level two questions. You also get access to reading material and practice questions available on the dashboard of Olympiad Success and also access to level two topic wise mock test for science. Syllabus for class six science is available on this particular link and fees can be paid by clicking on this particular link. Don't worry, all the relevant links will again be pasted in the chat box for you to avail. The fees for this course is 4,500 rupees. And it is going to be a 20 sessions course. The fees includes online classes, daily reading notes and exercises, practice of previous year level two questions, access to Olympiad success platform for science. Now children, while you are getting enrolled for this course, you should share your role number with us because in case you do not make it to level two, unfortunately, then in that case, 
we would be refunding the fee after deduction of 10%. Okay. So all that you require for these classes is a laptop or a desktop with good internet speed. Your camera should be working because it has to be on throughout the class and headphones for better audio clarity. Now in 2020-21, Olympiad Success had students from more than 3,800 schools across India and abroad hailing from 35 plus countries. The live classes for this particular batch begins from Tuesday, 12th of December, 2023. So I hope you've noted down all the relevant details. In case you have a doubt, please ask. Any doubt, anyone? Mantram, Arav, Shravya, Arvya, Nilargya, Ashas, any doubt, anyone? No doubt. Nilargya, please switch on your camera. Okay, can you tell me uh, the class timings? So Ashas and Shravya are saying 8 to 9.15 p.m. Is that correct? Nice to see you, Nirlagya, but again, you have put it off. Yeah, 8 to 9.15 p.m. is correct. How many sessions are going to be there overall? 20 is correct. Right. Yes, with five minutes of break in between. Good, you were attentive during the PPT. Okay, and what are the class days? Tuesdays and Thursdays, is this correct? Yes, that's the correct answer, Tuesdays and Thursdays. I mean, Tuesdays and Saturdays, right. So I believe uh, nobody has a doubt now. Everything is clear? Okay, then we shall begin with the demo. So all over to you, Ishwarya, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. All right, let me just share my screen. Just give me one second. Okay, I hope everybody can see my screen. Yes, ma'am, it is visible. Okay, great. So today uh, for the demo, we're going to talk about electricity and circuits. So we're going to do some questions based on the level two, right? So in this, of course, we have questions based upon your series circuit or your parallel circuit mostly and identification of these circuits, right? So let's start with the first question. Now, what I want you to do is make sure that you answer each of these questions that are given on the screen. Send me a direct message so that I know how many of you know the answers. Even if the answers are wrong, that doesn't matter. We're all here to learn, okay? But make sure you're not sending the answers in the chat box to everyone, okay? Answer me directly. You can just put A, B, C, D, whatever is the option. So let's look at the first question. First question says, which of the following statements about the circuit is correct? So there's a circuit that we have. So lamp one will light up when either lamp two or lamp three are lighted. Electricity will flow only when all the switches are closed. Current flowing through L1 and L2 are equal. And last one is electricity will flow as long as any one of the switches closed. Look at the circuit carefully. Understand whether it is in series or whether the lamps are in parallel to each other and accordingly you have to answer the question. Okay, RF correct, very good. What about others? Others think? 
and i want everybody to answer even if you feel that you don't know the answer whatever you know about the concept of parallel and series circuit i want you to answer okay i've got some answers but they're incorrect think again look at each and every lamp individually see if they are in series or are they in parallel with each other so what is a series circuit can someone tell me how does a series circuit look like and how does a parallel circuit look like uh please Arif, can you put it in the chat box please only for today's session like ma'am said we'll not be able to unmute you In a series circuit, what will happen? How are the bulbs arranged? Okay, Ajaz, uh, Asha is now correct. Side by side, correct. Very good, Arav. So in a series circuit, what will happen? Everything is in the same uh, loop. That means, let's say if this is bulb one, this is bulb two, and there's bulb three here. All of them are in the same loop they will have a single flow of current amongst them, all right? Whereas in a parallel circuit, all of them are in different loops altogether. So let's say this is your parallel circuit. Here we have lamp one, here we have lamp two, and here we have lamp three. So if you see here, if the current is flowing, let's say in this direction, this circuit is individual. There's a single loop here. This is your second loop of electric current being flown. And this is your third loop. So all three lamps will be independent of each other. Okay. So let's look at option one. Option one says if lamp L1 is lighting up, either L2 or L3 are lighted. So if this one is lighting up, where is your source of electricity? Source of electricity is here. This is your battery, right? This is your positive terminal. This is your negative terminal. And in this direction, you have the flow of current. Now, if L1 has to light up, either it will follow this circuit, this loop to complete the circuit, or it will follow this loop to complete the circuit. Right? So this option is correct. If L1 is lighting up, either L2 or L3 has to be lighted. Only then there will be a complete circuit. Otherwise, the circuit will not be completed. Let's look at the other options why they are incorrect. Electricity will flow only when all the switches are closed. How many switches do we have? This is switch 1, this is switch 2, and this is switch 3. So they are saying electricity will flow only if all switches are closed. That's incorrect. Why? Because even if one switch is closed, let's say if S2 is closed, this loop will be completed or this circuit is completed, right? Or let's say if switch 3 is closed, then also the circuit is complete. So either one of the switches, if they are closed, the circuit is complete and electricity will flow through this circuit. Next option, current flowing through L1 and L2 are equal. L1 and L2 are equal. This is incorrect. Why? Because for L2, the current is splitting into two halves, if you see. It is L2 and L3 have split up their amount of current. So L1 will get more current or will get more charge compared to L2 and L3. This is what happens in a series or parallel circuit. For parallel circuit, both of them will get equal amount of charge that means l2 and l3 are same charges because they are parallel to each other but l1 is in series with l2 and l3 respectively l1 is in series with l2 also l1 is in series with l3 also so in a series circuit usually the voltage or the amount of charge that there is present will split so normally what happens for a series circuit Total voltage is equal to V1 plus V2 plus V3 and so on. V is the amount of voltage individually present in each of the lamps. Okay. Whereas in a series circuit, the total voltage is equal to all the voltages that are present. Okay. So this is for parallel and this is for series. 
Okay. Any doubt so far, anyone? Yes, Arif, tell me what's your doubt. You can put it in the chat box. No, if L3 is closed, that means this switch is on, right? Open your saying. Then this circuit will not be completed only. Okay. There will be no flow of charge. It doesn't happen in charges. What happens is in a circuit, it doesn't happen that the charge will flow till here and if the switch is open, it will stop here. No. There is a there is a principle which is known as all or none. Either all the charge will flow, that means there will be a complete circus, circuit or no charge will flow at all. There will be no flow of charge starting from here only if this circuit is broken. Okay, so nothing goes to waste. No half current is flowing. If the circuit is open, no flow of charge will happen. All right. Anything else, Arav? Okay, put it in the chat box. Till then, I'll explain the last option why that is incorrect. Yeah, entire current will go through L2. I am saying in case L1 and L2, let's say all the current is flowing. In that case, I'm saying that L2 and L3 will divide their charges and L1 will have more charge. That is what I mean. Yeah, if L uh, if S3 is open, then nothing will flow through L3. Correct. Entire charge will go through L2. That's correct. Okay, last one. Car electricity will flow as long as any one switch is closed. Okay, so this is incorrect. Why? Because if any one switch is closed, let's say this switch is closed. The current can't flow because again, here in this circuit, there is no power source only. So there is no flow of electricity if S1 is closed. Either S2 or S3 has to be closed for the circuit to be completed. Okay, so only option A is correct. Any doubt anyone? Those of you who would not answer this question? Any doubt? Yes, no? Okay. All right, let's move on to the next question then. Voltage is the amount of current that is flowing. Normally we uh, measure current in terms of amperes and charge in terms of voltage, okay? So the amount of charge that is flowing through a circuit is voltage. Amount of current that is flowing through the, volt, uh, through the circuit is known as amperes, okay? They are just unit of measurement. Okay, next question. Frank created a circuit tester as shown below because he wanted to test the electrical conductivity of some materials. He connected points S and T to the material that he was testing. Sorry. However, his teacher told him that his circuit tester will not work. What can Frank do to make sure that his circuit tester will allow him to know if the material he is testing is a conductor of electricity? So we have S and T, this is your power source and this is your electrical circuit. Add a bulb, add a switch, use a short wire, shorter wire or use two batteries instead of one. So how will he know whether or not it is working or not? Correct. Arav and Asha's correct. What about others? Everyone please answer at least. And Arya and Nilargya, please switch on your videos. Okay. Arya, think about it. How will you know whether electricity is flowing through a circuit or not? You have to know, You basically you have to find out an indicator. If I have a circuit, correct, mantra. If we have a circuit, how will I know that electricity is passing through it? Because I can't see the charges. I can't see the flow of charge or I can't see the flow of current. Then how will I know that electricity is passing through the circuit or not? If is it a, if is it a functional circuit or not? I can know if the circuit is functional or not by adding a bulb. If electricity is flowing through the circuit, the bulb will light up. If electricity is not flowing through the circuit, bulb will not light up. So a bulb or any other indicator, maybe we can use something for sound or maybe we can use something uh, that produces heat. So here there is no other option that is doing that indication. So it is only bulb given. So you add a bulb 
if the material is a conductor, it will allow electricity to pass through it and the bulb will light up. If the material is an insulator, then the bulb will not light up. Got it? Uh, nothing. Uh, RF charge and current is basically a charge is when we say current gives actually the direction of the charge. All right. So normally what happens is whenever we say uh, current is flowing through the circuit or we have electricity flowing through the circuit, it usually goes from the positive terminal to the negative terminal. Correct. So current flows from positive terminal of the battery to the negative terminal of the battery. That is a flow of the current or the electricity that is flowing. Charge is basically how is current flowing? Current is flowing in terms of electrons, which is nothing but a charge. So it's a negatively charged ion, right? Which is present in the atom. So when we're talking about charge, it is always the flow of electrons. So electrons will always flow from negative to positive. So charge will flow from negative to positive. Current will flow from positive to negative. So the flow of electricity is measured in terms of current. Okay. If uh, formula wise, yeah, voltage gives you the amount of charge, correct. It's not actually the amount of charge technically. Charge is measured in another unit called co column, but voltage will indicate how much, voltage is basically, basically the measurement of how much charge any particular device can attract towards itself. So for example, in our homes, in Indian homes, the all your electric electrical points that you have, all the electrical sockets that you have, have a supply of 220 volts. So all your devices will work maximum at 220 volts. So for example, your phone uses up to 50 volts of charge. Okay, it attracts 50 volts of charge for the phone to get charged up. Your, your laptop or your uh, computer will maybe be a little higher because it has a bigger battery, it's a bigger device. Okay, your air conditioner is a much bigger device. Your refrigerator is a much bigger device. So they will attract maybe 150 volts of energy or 200 volts of energy. Okay, so that much, the amount of energy that is being attracted by any device or any substance is the voltage. All right, next question. Hilda set up an electrical circuit with three new batteries, three working bulbs and two switches as shown in the diagram. Which of the following is or are correctly observed when Hilda controlled the switches S1 and S2? Okay, so the table is given. You have to find out which one is correct. So option A is, for example, S1 is open, S2 is also open. So bulbs that are lighting up is B1, unlit B2, B3 is unlit. Lit means that it is lighting up. It's showing light or not showing light okay b option is s1 close s2 open b1 unlit b2 lit b3 unlit next c option s1 open s2 close bulbs b1 lit unlit lit d uh, s1 close s2 close b1 lit b2 unlit b3 lit so basically you have to figure out if s1 and s2 are close or open respectively, what happens to the different bulbs? Basically, you have to find out is the circuit open or close at any given point of time? Which one is the correctly marked or correctly observed option here? Take your time, read it one by one and then see. RF correct, good. Put in your options quickly. Thank everyone. No problem, Aru. Uh, what is your doubt? What is okay? Current is actually defined as, uh, if you if you give the formula for current, current is uh, basically the voltage 
given or the voltage per resistance that is offered. Okay, so you don't have to go into detail of that. But if I have to define current in terms of its formula, current is given as I up voltage upon the resistance. Resistance is basically whenever you keep on adding any device to a series circuit, okay, or any circuit. For example, if I add one bulb, that one bulb is glowing, so it is providing some resistance. If I add two bulbs, there'll be addition of a resistance. Three bulbs, four bulbs, like that. So any device that is keep that keeps on adding, keeps on taking the current, right? Or keeps on taking charge. So if I have to define current, current is voltage per resistance flowing through the circuit. Actually, the car, if I have to define electrical energy, it is just flow of charge from one point to another. But in the circuit, we have flow of current present, which will take into consideration voltage also. It will take into consideration resistance also. It will take into consideration everything. Okay, Nilagya. That's okay. All right. Quickly, everyone. Mantram. Arya, what do you think? Take it one by one. So let's say, let's look at option one. S1 is open, S2 is open. That means this is also open. So there is no flow here. So B2 will not light up. And if S2 is open, then B1 and B3 will also not light up. The entire circuit is incomplete. So there is no lighting up. So this is incorrect. So automatically option A becomes incorrect. Let's look at option B now. Option B is what? Option B is S1 is closed. So S1 is closed and S2 is open. So in this case, what will happen is if S1 is closed, only this circuit is complete, right? That means only B2 should light up. B1 and B3 should not light up which is actually given B1 and B3 is not lighting up. Only B2 is lighting up. So this is your correct option. All right. Let's look at other options also. See, S1 is open. This is open. This one is closed. So if this one is closed, then what will happen? Source of electricity is here. So this is your complete circuit. So all three should light up if S2 is close. But here, this one is written as unlit. So this is an incorrect option. Okay. Next we have is option D. S1 is close. Again, this is close, they're saying. And this is also close. If all, all of them are closed, then obviously all three will light up. Again, this is incorrect. So this is an incorrect option. Only option B is correct. Um, it depends first of all, but mostly it's alternate current mantra. Okay, because if direct current will come, then there will be excessive flow of current electricity and it can ruin all your lighting and the, there'll be an oversurge of electricity that will come. And that is why alternate current comes in. Okay. Any doubt so far, anyone? Okay, let's move forward. So we have... Question four, Travis set up an electrical circuit as shown in the given diagram below. The bulb did not light up. What should Travis do to make the bulb light up and why? Okay, so this is your switches. We have the bulb, we have the battery and we have the wire. Change the bulb because it is faulty. Change the batteries because they are flat. Connect the wire to Z instead of Y because it closes the circuit. And connect the switch arm to X instead of Z because it closes the circuit. What is the correct option? Read the question carefully. Where do you think the circuit will close or not close? Or do you think the bulb is only faulty? R of correct. Switch arm is closing Y and Z and X is open. Read the question again. 
others an answer. I'll give you a minute to think. Okay. Mantram think. I'll do 50-50 for you. A and B are not the correct options. Bulb is not faulty and the batteries are also, doesn't matter what is the shape of the battery. It will still give you electricity or the source of power will still be provided by the battery. So A and B are not the correct option. It's either C or it's either D. Yeah. So now if I take the switch here, in Z there is no wire connected, right? So if this switch is closed, it doesn't change the route of the electricity that is flowing through the wire because there's no wire connected only. Z has nothing to do with the circuit. So can I take the switch arm and connect it to X instead? If I connect it to X, what will happen? There will be a complete circuit present. So the correct option will be option D. Connect the switch arm to X instead of Z because it will close the circuit. In option C, it's written, connect the wire to Z instead of Y because it closes the circuit. Even if I connect the wire to Z, X is still open, no? So it will still not close the circuit. Okay, so only option D is correct. Next one. Um, RF a switch arm is nothing but a, like a normal switch only. But instead of like a button switch, it is... Uh, uh, we are switching like the arm. It's actually a connector. It is made up of a metal material. And the moment you connect it, it will complete the circuit. Nothing else. Okay. All right. Uh, the, the previous question, you mean everything? No, it's a mixture. Okay. All right. The diagram shows an electric circuit. In which order must the switches be closed so that the bulb A lights are first, followed by bulb B, and then bulb C. So which switches will you close first, second, and third? A is X, Z, and Y. B is Y, Z, and X. C is Z, Y, and X. And D is Z, X, and Y. So first I want to light up A, then B, and then C. So what uh, pathway should I follow? are uh, correct. Ashaz and Mantram, quickly put in your answers. Mantram, correct. Ashaz, what about you? I want to light up A first. Then I want to light up B. And then I want to light up C. So if I want to light up A first, I will switch on Z first. Right? For B, I want to switch on X. And then for C, I want to switch on Y. So the correct series will be Z, X, and Y, which is option D. Okay? All right. Next question. Study the circuit below. If bulb is fused, uh, will result in two other bulbs lighting up in the circuit. Which bulb, if fused, will result, up, result in only two other bulbs lighting up in the circuit out of A, B, C, D. Put in your answers in the chat box quickly. I want only two bulbs to be lighted up when one bulb is fused. Mm, think, out of think, again. I want only one bulb to be lighted up. Yes. Mantram and Arav correct now. Asha is waiting for you to answer. Could he answer? Then I'll explain. Asha, take a guess. Okay, correct answer is option B. If B is fused, then only that, uh, that will result in lighting up of only two other bulbs. 
What are those two other bulbs? No, why will it be a uh, few unlit? If B is fused, then what will happen is the series will, uh, the uh, circuit is being completed from here, no? If B is fused. So how will C and D will light up? Or oh, sorry, be unlit. Yeah, A and C both will be lit only. Even D will be lit. We want something that is basically causing any other bulb to light up if B is fused. Okay. What about even A could be an option, but there is no option like that. Even if A is fused, rest of the bulbs will light up. Okay. But there is no option like that. Let's say if C is fused. What will happen? If C is fused, then B will also not light up or D will also not light up. Or let's say A will not light up or D will not light up. So two bulbs will not light up. We want other bulbs to light up. Yes, Arav. When they say will result in two other bulbs lighting up, they mean at least two other bulbs are lighting. Got it? Yes, Arav, what's your doubt? All right. Clear? Let's move forward. Answer is B. All right. Next question. Xavier set up two electrical circuits, P and Q, as shown below. The bulbs and batteries used were identical. All the bulbs lighted up when the switches were closed. What variables must he keep constant if he wants to find out the number of batteries that will affect the brightness of the bulb? Okay, so there are two circuits given. Uh, the variables can be number of bulbs, number of batteries, number of, uh, sorry, the brightness of the bulb and the arrangement of the bulb. What should he keep constant so that he can find out the brightness of the bulb? How bright or how not bright the bulb is lighting? Correct, Arun. What about others? Mantram correct. Ashas, what about you? Take a guess. Or this is an easy question, actually. You don't even have to take a guess. What do I need to keep constant to check the brightness of the bulb? First, the number of bulbs should be constant, right? Because if number of bulbs is added or is deleted, then like I said, because both the circuits are in series, right? Individually, P is also a series circuit and Q is also a series circuit. So that means if I keep on adding the number of bulbs, then with what will happen? The amount of current that is flowing through the bulbs will get distributed. So your brightness will automatically decrease. So the number of bulbs has to be constant to check the brightness of the bulb. So number A has to be constant then number of batteries you can decrease or increase because number of batteries will determine how much current is passing if there is more number of batteries more brightness in the bulb less number of batteries less brightness in the bulb so number of batteries you can uh, change brightness of the bulb that means you can't use for one study you can't use 10 volts of uh, 10 watts of bulb and the other one you're using 100 watts of bulb obviously 100 watt bulb will be much brighter as compared to a 10 watt bulb right so second one that has to remain constant is the brightness of the bulb. And last one, arrangement of the bulb. Arrangement of the bulb can be changed. That means you can check if they are in series, they are in parallel and see the brightness change according. So B and D can be changed. A and C has to be constant. Understood everyone? So Mantram and Arav uh, answered it correctly. Ashaz, you've understood? So only A and D has to be constant. All right, next one. Jack connected a simple electric circuit using materials Y, X, Y, Z with different combinations. He recorded the result as shown below. So when materials X and Y were combined, the bulb did not light up. When W and X were connected, the bulb lighted up. Y and Z, no bulb lighted up. W and Z, bulb lighted up. Now, according to the chart given below, uh, sorry, above, 
which materials are electric conductors and which materials are insulators. So you have to find just conductors basically. Okay. So electric conductors are correct. All of you are correct. Very good. So first answer where I got all correct answers. So Arav, Harshas and uh, Mantram correct. So here if you see when X and Y are combined, it's not lighting up. But W and X, when they're connected, they are lighting up. That means W and X, both are conductors. Then again, Y and Z, when they're connecting, it's not lighting up. When W and Z is connecting, then they are lighting up. That means Z is also a conductor. So X, Y, sorry, X, W and Z are conductors. Here, common factor where no bulb is lighting up is Y. So Y is an insulator. Okay. Can you give me some examples of conductors? Give me two examples of conductor, everyone. Put it in the chat box. Personal message. Okay. Uh, mantram, okay. Shaz. Okay. Is water a conductor of electricity? Are you sure? Hmm. Salty water is a conductor. Pure water is not a conductor of electricity. Okay. So tap water is a conductor. Mineral water could be a conductor. Salty water could be a conductor because it has ions present. But pure water is not. Yes, Arav, you have a doubt? Hmm. Dirty water? Yeah. Dirty water also. Because it will have certain minerals and all of it. Yes, Arav. Sodium chloride? Yeah. Sodium chloride is a salt. So in a solution form, it will be a conductor, not in the solid form. So basically, it is making water salty, right? Sodium chloride is nothing but your common salt or the table salt that we eat. So salty water is a good conductor of electricity, not pure water. Any insulator? Examples of insulator? Mm, okay. Correct, Ara. What else? Okay, Ashas, okay, rubber, ebonite, okay, plastic, bakelite. All right, great. So you know your insulators and conductors. Okay, next question. Look at the circuit diagram given below. When one of the bulb is not working, the other three bulbs will not light up. Which bulb is that? Uh, which is the bulb that is not working? One bulb is leading to the blockage or the not, like if one bulb is not working, all the rest of the bulbs will also not work. Okay. Sure, think about it. Uh... I've got only one. Okay. Okay. Arav and Asha is correct. Mantram think. I'll give you another minute. Mantram, what is your answer? The one that you've given is incorrect. Yeah, now it's correct. Option D would be the correct one. Why? Because if you look at B4, what is happening is, let's say we look at it one by one. If B1 is not lighting up, let's say this one is fused, this circuit is still complete. So B3 and B4 will light up. Okay. Again, similarly, B2 is not working up, working then also B3 and B4 will still light up, right? Let's say B3 is not working. B3 is not working, this circuit will always work. So all three are still lighting up, okay? And let's say this is not lighting up, then the circuit cannot be completed in any way because if you look at this, there is no source here. Source is here only and it needs to 
go through B4. So if B4 is not lighting up, none of them will light up. Okay. Uh, no, uh, Ara, we will do both. We'll do a quick revision of the chapter and then we'll do previous year questions. Okay, so you can clear your doubts. The schedule will be provided to you, right? So if the schedule is provided to you, you will know which chapter we're going to do. We'll do, a, like for each session, we'll do one chapter each. So for example, if you're doing electricity and circuit, we'll quickly go through your doubts and revision and then we'll do previous year questions, level two questions. Okay. Uh, all right, Ashas. In school, you mean? School, you did electricity and circuit today? Then, oh, in class, all right. All right, this is the last question that we have. So diagram below shows a circuit with four open switches. All right, which of the switches should be closed so that only one bulb in the circuit is able to light up most brightly? B and C only, A, B, C only, A, B, D only, B, C and D only. Which of the switches should be closed so that only one bulb in the circuit is able to light up most brightly? We want only one bulb lighting up. Uh, are of correct? There are two bulbs. We want only one bulb to light up. So which switch should be closed? It's an easy one. Uh, uh, Mantram and Ashas, think about your options. See how many batteries are present. Number, I'll give you a hint. The more the number of batteries, more brightly will the bulb light up. So which switch will you close? So that out of the two bulbs that we have, one of them will shine or will glow brightly. I'll give you a minute to solve this. Quickly, everyone. Arav has given the correct answer. Hmm. Okay. Let's. Correct answer is option C. Why option C? This is bulb one, this is bulb two. If I want to light up bulb one, there's only one battery. Okay. So if I close the switch ABC, bulb one will light up, but only one battery is present. Okay. So it will not light up as brightly as bulb two. If this is bulb one and this is bulb two, if I switch on this, this, and this, this is the circuit it will follow. If this is the circuit it will follow, how many number of batteries are there? One and two. So this will glow more brightly as compared to this circuit. Okay. So option will be A, B, and D only, which is the option C. Got it? Any doubt, anyone? Okay. So these were your questions, but since we have time, we'll do some more questions. Just let me see if we have more questions here, but I'll give you some more questions to solve apart from the circuits that we have. Let's see your solution. Let me just go back. So I just need a blank space. All right, let's use this space only. So first of all, can someone tell me? Let's just quickly go through the concept. So we are everybody is clear with what is what are insulators and conductors, right? Now let's say if I have certain kinds of conductors, conductors are allowing electricity to pass through it, right? Now we've established that water is a bad conductor of electricity, okay? So can you tell me why if I have wet hands, 
or my fingers are wet or I've just taken a bath and I go and touch a switch, I'll get electrocuted. Why? Normally, we don't touch switches or anything with wet hands, right? Why is that so? Even though we say that water is a bat. Correct, Mantra. Very good. What about others? Let's say it's not tap water. Let's say it is RF correct. Asha, let's say it's not tap water. It's pure water. Still, I'll get electrocuted. It is because our bodies are good conductors of electricity. Okay. We have ions, we have molecules present in our body. So electricity will pass through our body. That is why we normally say that you should wear rubber slippers or, uh, you know, when you're touching any switch or your hands are wet, always make sure that you're wearing slippers. Okay. Now, what about, we all know that, you know, uh, there's earthing present. When electricity is flowing through our homes, we usually have earthing present. That means it is, uh, there's a neutral charge or a neutral place where the earthing is present for all your devices your main circuit only has earthing in it basically it is connected to the earth why is that so if earthing is not there what will happen there will be short circuit happening again and again why is earthing resnic required for any device that you have large devices like let's say like uh, your uh, acs and refrigerators and all all are earthed that means they are all connected to a neutral source or all connected to a uh, insulator. So how will that help RF? That is correct. But how is earthing helping? Why are we doing it? We want electricity to flow through our devices, right? So why are we doing Ajaz, Ajaz, I'm saying that let's say this is your elect electric circuit, okay? of your refrigerator. So whatever this is your power source, this is your circuit or the electricity current flowing through the fridge. One portion is connected to a neutral, neutralizing or an insulator. Normally we call it earthing. In earlier times, it was connected to the earth or to the soil directly. But now we have insulators present in these devices. So it's connected to an insulator. Why do we connect it to an insulator? despite the fact that we want electricity to keep on flowing through it. Very good mantra, correct. Ajaz and Arav. So we are connecting it to an insulator basically. Correct, Arav. So we, if there is too much flow of current because you know, the main power source is giving all the current to the devices right now when that is happening what is happening all the current is flowing towards your devices so what we want is we don't want excessive current to flow into the devices and cause short circuit all right so what happens is we earth the device so that excessive current can flow towards the neutral substance and there's no electric shock present okay another question what about the kind of circuits that you have at your homes? Is it parallel circuit or is it series circuit? All the lights and switches and whatever that we have at homes, are they connected in series or are they in parallel? All of them are? Of? So you mean each switch, each? All of them, Mantra, again, same question. That means each switch, each light bulb in your homes are they all connected in parallel or they are all connected series with each other okay mantra what do you think and ashaz what do you think so there's a combination that happens some of the let's say you know some of the circuits are connected in series other are in parallel so sometimes it happens if there's a fuse or a electric uh, you know short circuit that happens at your home or let's say a portion of the light is not lighting up at your home so what will happen some lights are in series with each other so let's say maybe in one room your fan your one switchboard and one light is light bulb is not working one phase is not working and all the others are working 
okay so some of them will be connected in series some of them will be connected in parallel it depends upon the electrical wiring at your individual homes there is no hard and fast rule it depends upon the make of your house the make of your society all of those things right so sometimes you must have seen that in some places some um, areas of your house might get short circuited and the entire phase will stop lighting up or it will uh, basically fuse up so they might all be connected in series other are in parallel okay continuing this question can you tell me let's say um, if we have a cd circuit connection so i'm saying that i've already told you that yes ara you can put in your question in the chat box yeah so that means they are all in parallel to each other okay so one of them is not working that one is parallel others are in parallel to that one right individually okay so uh, like i said um uh, some are connected in series and some are connected in parallel right now sometimes what happens is we have not sometimes all the other times each and every device has a fuse connected to it and even in your main switchboard you have a fuse what is the function of a fuse and why is it important even in your you know you must have seen uh, your multi plugs that you have i'm asking that what is a fuse and why is it important in your electrical circuits devices we have a fuse present what does the fuse do okay so what is it made up of mantra okay are of correct what is it made up of what is the fuse made up of will it be made up of of course it is made up of a conductor only it is made up of a wire only but uh, does this wire have very high melting point or very low melting point the wire that is present in the fuse are of that's correct high melting mantram correct ajas if it has think about it high melting point low melting point mantram you're right are of right it has a low melting point so that when extra electricity is coming in or there's a uh, more flow of electric current it heats up quickly it melts it will break off and it will break the electric circuit avoiding any kind of short circuiting okay what about all right very good i think everybody's clear with fuse and electrical circuits now tell me let's say if i have a, a multi plug you know your switchboards that come where you can attach multiple uh you know plugs onto it uh what will happen let's say this is your see let's say this is your circuit and this is let's say your multi plug right and there are multiple switches attached so this one is attaching to this there is another device that is attaching to this and so on and so forth this device is attaching here what do you think will be the charge distribution that means whatever electricity electric current is flowing will it completely divide between 1 2 3 4 or will it be equal no i want to know whether it is equal that means voltage total voltage is it v1 v2 v3 v4 or will it be it will be divided ashas is saying it will be equal Ara, what do you think? If I have a multi plug, first one, second one. Okay, one second you're saying. Okay, think. If I have a multi plug, then will all the current be equally divided, or will it be? distributed like say total voltage was 220 and it is going to be divided like 100 150 and all it will be distributed you saying okay if it gets distributed then what is the use of the multi plug that means let's say my phone requires 50 watts volts of charge okay and on a multi plug i have so multi plug is giving me let's say the power source is only 100 volts 
okay and i have 10 five phones connected on this multi plug so that means 100 volts is getting divided amongst five of them that is what you mean if it will get divided then how will my phone charge it will never charge only because it requires 50 volts to charge so what is the use of a multi plug if it gets divided it will not divide it will be equal only okay that is why at if you see a multi plug carefully at the end of the multi plug there is a fuse present it's a small little fuse it's exposed only you can see it it's right below the switch okay there's a fuse present so that if there's rush of electricity coming in or let's say you switch it off switch it off uh, frequently then it will break the circuit the fuse will go off yes Ashas, i mean that only it will be distributed equally 100 100 100 100 okay any doubt so far anyone okay ara what's your doubt you want me to explain what is voltage right voltage is basically if i want to explain in terms of the in simple terms voltage is basically how much amount of electricity or the amount of charge that is being extracted or that is being attracted towards a particular device okay so normally it is uh, in terms of like in physical terms it is the difference between the electrical potential energy between two things so the source is let's say 220 volts but my phone only requires 50 volts so it will attract only 50 volts towards itself okay that much amount of voltage is coming from here to here Though the power source can emit out 220, but only 50 volts is being attracted. So that is the voltage. 50 volts of charge or 50 volts of electrical, let's say tension or pressure is coming from this point to the other point. Okay. Now let's say I have a device which works on, which requires 300 volts but my source is only 220 volts. So I can't use this device at my house. So that is why you must have seen each and every country has its own plug point, no? That's why we use a converter normally. If you're traveling outside, every plug or every switch is different for most of the countries. Mainly the South Asian countries, we have a rounded plug. But if you go to US and all, they have a pin plug. Their switches also look different. Our switch looks different, okay? I said uh, the difference between the electrical potential that is different, the potential energy that is different between the two points from one point to another. So source and the device, that is your voltage. Before that, I didn't say anything, I think. This is what I said. Voltage is the electrical tension or the electrical potential difference between two points. Okay. So one is emitting out voltage, other one is attracting that voltage. So however amount of electricity or the current is being attracted, that is your voltage. Okay. So for each and every device, voltage is given. Your batteries work on 10 volts. Okay. Your uh, bulbs will work on 5 volts maybe, depending upon that. That means this much amount of energy is being attracted towards itself from the source. All right. Okay. Uh, I think that's it. More or less, we've covered most of the things that is present in electricity. So when we come to our regular classes, like, like I mentioned before, we will be revising the chapter. So for the schedule, go through the schedule, revise that chapter when you come for class. And we'll do a quick revision and then do the questions. Okay. And, and for your normal, like your, for your self-learning, you will have to do the previous question, your question as much as possible. That is what will make you clear your level two also so practice as many questions as possible that's it because you're done with level one so you know your concepts there's nothing new that you're learning right you simply have to solve as many questions as possible so that you get an idea of what is the pattern you already know the pattern also okay all right then it was nice having you guys i hope i see everyone in the regular classes i hope you enjoyed the demo all right so i'll see you soon everyone thank you for joining Good night. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. See you. Thank you.